all set. Okay. Um, hi guys, my name is Katherine Emmett. Um, I am an RN. I'm working right now on my MSN degree through Gonzaga University. Um, and so I'm doing a practicum here at the hospital. And one thing that Christy had asked me to help out with was the pediatric care. Um, and specifically when I went around to the floors, pediatric IVs was something that they asked for a little bit of an in-service on. Um, a little bit about me, I got my ADN from Western Wyoming in 2011 and moved up to Spokane, Washington. Um, while I was up in Spokane, I worked for four years in private duty pediatrics. Um, and then of those four years, two of them I spent on the med floor at Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. And then I did another two years uh, as a pediatric hospice. So my, most of my experience has been mainly pediatrics. Right now I'm working with Best Home Health over in Green River. Um, I'm the nurse supervisor for the Green River office. Um, and then I'm also going to be the nursing care coordinator for the hospice program for Sweetwater County for Best Home Health. Um, so this presentation we're going to go over a little bit of IV technique. I have some videos um, to watch. And then also just some growth and development. I think that's really important and something that kind of gets left out. Um, I know especially the ADN program um, doesn't really hit pediatrics very hard, and mostly that's because there's not a lot of pediatric specific things in our area. Um, so here's the presentation. Um, so the first thing is a little bit of growth and development. Um, I'm starting with the babies, and with this growth and development, I'm only going up to about five years old. Um, pediatrics does range all the way to 18, that they're still considered a peds. Um, but the older kids I'm not really focusing as much on. Um, so the babies, it's going to be 0 to 12 months. Um, they are experiencing the world mostly through um, their mouth. <laughs> um, they have no language skills. Um, everything with them is really going to be observation. They can't tell you what's going on. Um, they're beginning to learn um, self-regulation and self-soothing from 0 to 12. Um, and then they are also um, start walking with adult support. Um, at 12 to 24 months, they can start pointing to objects if they're named. Um, they show an interest in colors and patterns. They are starting to use more of their senses to explore. They're not just sticking things in their mouth, although that is still a very large part of it. Um, they're also beginning to play independently and they show a curiosity about new things. For around two years old, which would be toddlers, um, they're starting to repeat words. They are understanding more, um, and they kind of understand quantity. Um, obviously not up into the higher numbers, but um, they're also um, starting to be able to describe what they're seeing. It's not gonna be complex sentences, but cat, dog, that sort of thing. Um, for three years old, they can start to answer simple questions. Um, so you don't want to be asking questions to children that are under three years old. They probably won't be able to answer you. Um, they can usually count to ten, some beyond. They use objects in a variety of different ways. Um, they're eager to help with chores. They're eager to assist. They're going to be modeling the behavior of the adults that are around them. And then pre-K, which would be the four to five-year-olds, um, they can associate sounds with written words. Um, they can match and group items. Uh, they participate in simple investigation. Um, they're expressing growing confidence in their abilities and independence. Um, this should all be something you guys have seen too, but just really quickly to touch on Erickson's psych development. Um, infants are in the trust versus mistrust stage. They're completely dependent and reliant on their caregivers. And depending on those relationships, it's either going to build trust in the outside world or missed trust. The toddlers are in the autonomy versus shame and doubt. They're starting to want to do things for themselves, but they're also very easily shamed and can become doubtful of their abilities um, if they're admonished. So it's really important to be encouraging and to try to be positive with them. Um, preschoolers, the initiative versus guilt. Um, I think these guys can be pretty trying, especially from a nursing perspective, <laughs> the preschool age. Um, they're wanting to do things themselves, they're showing initiative, but again, they're very susceptible to guilt at not being able to do those things. And so you have to be very careful when you're correcting or admonishing them um, 
to not be too harsh and not bring them down. The grade schoolers are industry versus inferiority. Um, doing things, they want to be creative, they want to be independent, do things on their own, but they're also having more interactions with their social groups and their peers. And so there's a little bit of the inferiority as far as the socializing. Um, teenagers, identity versus role confusion. They're starting to become independent and develop a true sense of themselves. Um, but there's also the confusion, they're not kids anymore, but they're also not adults yet. They're kind of in that in-between stage. Um, young adults, intimacy versus isolation. Middle-aged adults, um, generativity versus stagnation. And then the older adults, integrity versus despair. I'm not really going to go over those because they don't pertain to this presentation. Um, and then just very lastly, on kind of the growth and development, some of the motor skill stuff with the kiddos. Um, by age one month, they should have the hand grasp reflex. Um, around four months is when they're going to start placing anything you put in their hands in their mouth. So keep that in mind if you are handing or have objects for distraction. Um, seven months old, they're going to start moving objects from one hand to the other and be able to grasp them and hold on to them. By nine months, they should have a crude pincher grasp, and that's where you're going to see them start doing the hand puff cereals and different things when they're being fed. Um, by 11 to 12 months, they should have more of a neat pincher grasp, where it's more of a fine motor. Around 16 months, they should be able to build a tower of blocks. 24 months, they should be able to build a tower six to seven blocks high. And then by preschool age, they should have the fine motor coordination to be able to draw circles, um, use scissors, and dress themselves independently. Um, so now into the IV stuff. Probably the most overused phrase in pediatric nursing is that they are not little adults. And you'll hear that over and over and over again. You can't treat them like little adults. As far as their vein goes, you can. Their veins are exactly the same as those in an adult. Um, so on the lateral aspect of the arm, you're going to have the cephalic veins. On the medial, the basilic. Um, in an older child or an adolescent, those are going to be the best veins to try and either draw from or start an IV. Um, the AC you can use, especially in an older child, a teenager, 10 years old and up, where you can kind of explain to them they can't bend their arm, that kind of thing. Um, anyone younger, so infants or small children, your best bet is going to be the back of the hand, which is going to be the dorsal metacarpal veins. Um, and then for infant infants, if you're doing an IV in the head, um, they have the frontal vein, the superficial temporal, which is over on the side, the occipital to the back, or the posterior um, auricular, which is right behind the ear. Um, for IVs, it's all about the angle. For small superficial veins, or for in infants or small children, you're going to want to obviously use a smaller catheter. 22 to 24 gauge is normally what's used. And a very shallow angle, 10 to 25 degrees when you're inserting the needle in the IV catheter. Um, older children have a little bit deeper, larger veins, so you can use a larger catheter size. And you can go at a little bit steeper angle, like 30 to 45 degrees. Um, just some tips if you're having difficulty finding a vein. In a perfect world, you're going to use the non-dominant hand in an area where they're not going to bend or flex. It's not going to be easily pulled out. But it's not a perfect world, so inspect the opposite extremity. If you can't find anything on the right side, look to the left. Um, gravity is your friend. Let it hang down and let the blood pool, especially if it's an older child that's not going to be moving and pulling their arm up. Um, you can gently tap or stroke the area. Your best friend ever is going to be a warm washcloth or a heat pack. They are amazing, especially for kiddos, in bringing the veins up um, to where you can see them. And then being here in the hospital, you guys can use the vein scanners, the transillumination. Use your resources. If you have them, use them. Um, you can also use ultrasound. More than likely, it's probably not going to be a, your nurse using the ultrasound to find a vein, but it is technically possible. Um, some tricks specifically for kiddos. If it's not an emergency, use an emola cream to numb it. Most kids are more scared of the actual stick than 
the thought of the stick than they are the actual stick. So if you can explain to them the numbing, or if they can't feel the actual stick, they're not going to be as difficult to get an IV started on. Um, ask for help. Family is usually not the best person to help hold a kiddo down or to help anchor a vein. Um, parents don't want to see their kiddos hurt, even though they know it's necessary, they know you have to do it. They're still probably not the best ones. Um, if you have a wiggly baby, you can swaddle or mummy wrap them and then just leave the desired extremity out. That's going to be far easier than trying to control three other extremities and hold down arms and legs while they're kicking. Um, don't forget your splint, <laughs> especially if it's in an area that's going to be bendable like the AC. And the other thing is to distract. Um, again, kiddos are usually more scared of the thought of the needle or the stick than it actually happening. So if mom or dad are in the room and they have their cell phone, play a YouTube video, play a game, let the kiddo do something on it so that they're not thinking about you and what you're doing with the needle. short videos um, on IV sticks. This one is from the St. Louis Children's Hospital, and it's how they do ouchless IV That's starts. That's because kids are able to receive the center. They're getting sedated for tests. MRIs, CAT scans, a lot of radiology tests. Put you on the scale, okay? When Lauren first came in, we really just kind of gave her an overview of how the day's going to go. We let them know up front that they're going to need an IV start. It's, uh, we make it a practice to be very honest. Hi, Lori. My name is Joy. I'm a child life specialist. I'm here to tell you all about your IV start that we have to do right now. Okay. We incorporate our child life specialist who can explain the procedure, lets the kids play with all the equipment beforehand. Uh, knowledge is a good thing. The more they know about what we're going to do, the less afraid they are when actually it's time to get the IV started. It's really important that the parents just stay really calm and kind of act like this isn't a big deal. The parents come through the door nervous, the children come through the door nervous. IVs are intimidating for kids because nobody really likes needles. Everyone's afraid of needles, even adults. So we've tried to come up with a way so it's less intimidating and less painful. This is our cold wash cloth, okay? It's just going to clean me up a little bit, just relax. There's two types of kids. Some are watchers, and no matter how much distraction you do, they're still going to watch, and they do better. And some kids don't want to watch at all, and that's when the iPads and the games and the toys come in, come in handy. Two, three, big bugs. Little stick. hospital for these kind of treatments is all our equipment is specially made just for pediatric patients. And everything we do is geared to make their stay or their visit as positive as possible. Okay.
a little bit of injectable lidocaine. Um, I have seen that done sometimes. Normally, though, in the children's hospital, Sacred Heart, we use the Emla cream um, because kids are just as scared of getting the lidocaine as they are the actual IV stick because it's another needle. But either of those two do work. Um, this one is a little bit more on um, the IV insertion techniques for infants and small children um, to show more of the angle in the IV cap.
Thank you, Kate.